in Iowa, where corn is almost a religion, a new faith may be taking root. This is algae growing out of solution. It looks just like a cornfield. We run the harvester. This is our harvester. It reminds us of a combine pulling off the algae. Algae? Isn't that something we usually try to get rid of? You can actually crack the code on actually growing and harvesting algae and getting this biomass. The applications for this biomass is really incredible. You can use it to feed animals, you can use it to feed people, you can take its very high value in proteins. You can use it to fuel your cars, you can get the oil out of that. So when you look at algae, that's why so much interest is in it because it has such a wide application in so many different sources. In addition to its biofuel possibilities, algae is already being used in all kinds of ways you might not be aware of. Food products, baby formula, or nutritional supplements like spirulina. Algae contains the all-important nutrient omega-3 fatty acids. It's all about omega-3s, and the world is short omega-3s. They're long omega-6s and omega-7s, but they're short omega-3s, and algae may have the best ability to solve the shortage of omega-3s in the world at the highest quantity. Quantity, that's what they're trying to tackle here in Shenandoah, Iowa. In an unusual pairing, a traditional corn ethanol plant is supporting algae production, a next-generation biofuel. It turns out corn has what algae needs. A third of the kernel is starch being converted into fuel, a third of the kernel is fiber being converted into animal feed, and there's a third left. And all that is being today is being converted into CO2 in the atmosphere. So we could actually take that other third of the kernel that we're basically emitting into the atmosphere, capture it, and create a whole other product around how we convert CO2, warm water, waste heat, and sunlight into algae. CO2, wastewater, and heat, all byproducts of producing corn ethanol, exactly what algae needs. And this joint project called Bioprocess Algae is the result of an unlikely partnership. This whole process has been serendipitous. Todd Becker, CEO of Green Plains Renewable Energy, a major producer of corn ethanol, and Tim Burns, CEO of Bioprocess H2O, a water treatment company whose technology has been used to get algae out of water. How to keep algae out of wastewater systems. We have a lot of knowledge, and that knowledge gave us the opportunity to bring it into how we can grow algae, and we knew that with our system. The heart of it is attached growth. We have a system in which we provide a lot of surface area for the algae. Basically, think of a condominium for the algae to reside on. And that condominium provides a lot of surface area, so we have a big mass transfer device. Think of it that way. So on a typical open pond system, which algae is traditionally grown on, we would be about 40 times the surface area of a system. So it gives us a lot of opportunity to be more cost effective. Let's say an acre of land. An acre of land that produces corn today in the United States produces seven tons per acre. Our goal in these reactors is to get 15 to 40 tons per acre of product. And instead of a once a year harvest, algae is harvested several times a week. The idea of getting gas and oil from algae is really not new. In fact, it's millions of years old. All our oil today is ancient algae deposits. Compaction of hundreds of millions of years of riverbeds and compaction of algae already. What we're trying to do is accelerate with the process and to what Mother Nature has done so effectively and start to industrialize it and produce by our process. The stumbling block is cost. But recent breakthroughs promise to reduce that cost. At the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, Researchers have developed a technology that uses extreme pressure and high temperatures to accomplish in minutes what nature has done over millions of years, convert algae into oil. Still, to be cost effective, algae needs to be grown in high volume, and co-locating algae production with a corn ethanol plant might point the way. You basically can use free inputs, the sunlight, wastewater, warm water, heat, and CO2, and there's a lot of all of that available. And so if you actually combine all that, you can actually take something that is really free and you're going to create something with a lot of value. And in the process, they just might be teaching the rest of the world a new way to look at that greenhouse gas, CO2. Instead of a pollutant, it could become a product. If you think about the ability to utilize greenhouse gases and CO2, 
Algae, in my opinion, is the only profitable use of CO2 currently on the market. So if you're able to profitably use that CO2 portion, that's going to give you opportunity to mitigate the rest of the CO2 emission. Reducing CO2 emissions while growing a renewable and sustainable fuel source that could mean less expensive gas. That is the promise of algae. It may be a while before algae dethrones corn in this part of the world, but as this remarkable experiment is demonstrating, there's no reason they can't get along.